All right, folks, here's your part two of the site plan tutorial. Okay, so where we last left off is on Revit. We were looking at the site here, and we had just put in the property lines, as shown here with the bearings, as well as the setbacks. And uh, you can always tidy up these views if you click on you know certain aspects of it. Uh, you can, I'm just using the, the arrows on the keyboard to move things around a little bit, so it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, feel free to do that as well as remember for the text you can always rotate them too using this little fancy tool right there you can rotate it around make it look nice and pretty okay so next up for us is we need to link our Revit file so that it's our actual house shows up on the site plan uh, so what we're gonna do is go into insert so I'm in the insert tab and then go to link Revit okay so make sure at this point you should not have the um, Revit file opened because you want to make sure that you can pull it in um, with the way it's saved and make sure it is saved. And so at that point, I'm going to find the Revit files working on. So that was the affordable housing example that I was working on before. I'll hit open. And um, the way I actually had made this in 2018, so it's going to take a second here to load up. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I'll kind of think about where I want my file actually be placed. Right, so in this case, you can kind of see that obviously it has to fit within our building lines here, so within the setbacks. So you have 25, 25, 25, and 10 foot on this side. And typically speaking, you also want your driveway, uh, or meaning your front entrance, to be facing one of these side alleys. So either the asphalt alley to the east, or maybe the alley to the south. Um, it should not, the driveway cannot go to the main street, so it cannot go to 10th or Maple. Okay, so keeping that in mind. All right, so with that said, I can see that my file came in here. Um, at this point, you can play around with it a little bit. It came in facing south, looks like my main entrance. So if I want to, I can rotate it. Uh, you can use this rotate tool. Um, so let's say if this was the front, I want it now to be facing over here, for example. All right, so then it, that's a quick way to rotate it around. Uh, now, the other thing you have to look out for is that when they first, when you first bring in a link, a Revit file, if you go take a look at your 3D view right now, you see that it doesn't show up, right? If I zoom out way out here, I'll notice that it actually is way down here, okay? And now the reason for that is uh, when when Revit first links it, it links it at kind of zero feet or at, um, at sea level, and this actual plot of land is, you know, 700 feet above sea level, okay? So uh, best way to do that, I like to go to my front view, and then I will just go ahead and click and drag it all the way up to pretty much where I want it to be right before I zoom back in and then I can kind of get a better feel right and I can see that these are my foundations so my footings can actually go a few feet in and I'm noticing my ramp so I want my ramp to kind of just go ahead and ramp right up here so my foundations are going into the ground I've got my ramp going here uh, change my view a little bit see where we're at and that looks pretty decent. Okay, so let's just say that that's kind of where we want our house to be, just for the sake of example. Um, if anything, maybe I'll drag it over here a little bit. Okay, something like that. Okay, um, so again, feel free to play around with that a little bit, depending on where you want your house to sit. And the other thing to think about, remember we talked about design criteria, uh, windows, I don't really have too many windows on this, actually maybe zero windows on this right now. Uh, but you want your windows, for example, to get as much sunlight as possible. So you probably want it, the windows facing north and south uh, compared to east and west. Because if it's east and west, it will only see the sun during you know half of the day, um, that kind of thing. So keep that in mind, as well as the direction of the prevailing winds. You want to minimize that, especially in cold areas like Indiana. That's something you want to think about. Okay, the other thing that you have to start adding is things like your uh, sidewalks and driveways. Okay, so that's kind of next up on our list here. So to do that, I'm going to come up over here to Massing and Site. And the one I like to use is Subregion. Okay, this is kind of the easiest one to work with, at least when you first get started. And like I said, I'm going to have my driveway kind of ramp up over here to this alley. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go back to my floor plan view here. And notice again, my building has to be within my setbacks. So let's go ahead and have my driveway show up over here. 
So now that I'm under create subregion, I'm just going to create a rectangular shape. If you want, you can play around with some of these curves. You can make a nice fancy driveway or things like that. Okay, but for us here, I'm just going to keep it simple. And I'll create a driveway that looks kind of like this. All right, now the key thing to keep track of here is that we don't want it to overlap with any of these other, uh, especially with the line for the street right here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of zoom in really close and making sure that it's kind of just right up against that edge. Okay, we can always dimension this later. Zoom back out. All right, so there's kind of my driveway right now. I'll hit the check mark. Okay, subregions cannot intersect. So right now I'm overlapping this line. That's the problem. Okay, so I'll hit cancel. I'll come back over here, and if I click on this line, I'm going to drag it so that it's inside of the street. Okay. Now when I hit the check mark, it should be happier, and now I no longer am ramping up against the road. Okay. So just double check that. If that error message pops up, that just means you have to move it so that it's not overlapping this line, and then we can always tidy it up afterwards. So if I go to my 3D view now, Got my 3D view over here. Okay, I can see my driveways in there, and it's kind of going all the way up here. If I wanted to, uh, what I would probably do at this point is I would probably edit this region, edit the boundary, uh, then go back to my floor plan view, and then I'd also use this to create this the sidewalk. Okay, note the sidewalks are all five feet wide. Um, you can change the length or width of your driveway, whatever you want it to be. Um, and uh, actually, I skipped over the part for material. So when you have this boundary set up, uh, the material is set up right here. I have it set as asphalt. Um, so if you need to change it, you just click on those three dots, and you can change it to something else. Okay, you can also just have concrete. I think concrete's what's used for the walkway. Uh, asphalt's being what's used for the driveway. Um, so feel free to play around with some of the, the materials there as you want to. All right, so now we've got an option for driveways. Like I said, you have to include some sidewalks. I'll let you play around with that. Um, now, next up, the last portion of this is we need to add some trees. And um, I believe that is the main thing. Trees, and let me take a look at Schoology. We said sit back and property lines did that. Structure is within the setbacks. That's good. Driveway and sidewalks, that's what you're adding. Oh, north symbol, right. Okay, so at this point, we have to include a north symbol. So what I would be doing is if I come over here to insert, I'm going to go to load family. Okay, and there are some symbols already built in. So if I come here, I'm under annotations, and I scroll down, I'll find the north arrow. All right, let's find this one, for example. I'll hit open. Okay, and maybe I already have it in there. Let me see. Do I have one in here? Maybe not. Um, let me try that again. I'll go here under annotate and oh, maybe it's under symbols here. Ah, there it is. Okay, so under symbols, if I had it already, I'd load the family, but I already have a couple of those north arrows lined up here. So depending on which one you want to use. Okay. Okay, so again, insert symbol. I'll put this in there like that. And then I can just simply, if I want to add the, the letter N right there, just to say which way is north. Okay, so feel free to play around with that a little bit as well. Make it, you can kind of make it the way you want to. Okay, that's just a simple, simple way of doing that. Oops. All right. Okay, so you get the idea there. Zoom back out. Got a lot of lag here. Okay, so the final part is adding some trees and um, planters and things like that to maybe like the front garden. And that's done this before, but just to show you really quickly, go under architecture. I'm going to go under components. Okay, if I in this case, I already have some of the trees and stuff up here. Remember, deciduous is good, especially in cold areas like this. That means the leaves will fall off in the winter time. That gets you a lot more sunlight going into your house. Okay, the minimum here is you need at least eight trees along the main street. Uh, if you need to load more, you just go to load family. Uh, once you have load family pulled up, this menu comes in. You go find the library. Uh, I believe, let me just go up a step here. 
most of these should be under planting. Okay, and you can do tropical plants, shrubs, conif coniferous plants, deciduous plants, fall tropical, so on and so forth. All right, you hit open, whichever one you want. In this case, I already had a few here, so I've got a little an apple tree. Let's just do that one since that's what's selected. And at that point, I'm just going to go around and click wherever I want these trees to be. Okay, so I'll just plant some um, along the sidewalk there, and maybe plant a few over here. You can choose a few different types of trees if you want to, so on and so forth. Okay, and then again, you'll want to plant some in the front garden, maybe even in the backyard, depending on uh, what your client wants. Okay, that should get you through most of the site planning.